and welcome to my video that introduces the metric system and how to convert among different metric units. Now, this is units are so important and it's about communicating in the same language. Believe it or not, a $125 million Mars orbiter was lost because of a conversion mistake. So it's really important that you use correct and ideally whenever possible SI units, meters, kilograms, seconds, joules, okay, that you use those SI units and that kind of ensures you're not going to run into those problems. Now I, I wish we didn't have to use any English units. Sometimes you will have to do conversions between English and metric. For my personal students, I don't make them memorize English to metric. For example, I don't me make them memorize that there are 2.45 grams for every, uh, excuse me, um, centimeters for every one inch. I will give you, if you are my student, I will give you English to metric conversions. What you must memorize are the most common metric prefixes that are used not only in chemistry but also in common language now because of computer language. You know, you need to know what a terabyte of streaming um, memory is. You know, you have to know a ter what a terabyte is. You should know what a gigabyte is. You should know what a megabyte is. I think those are really, really important. Or pixels when you're talking about quality of images on a TV or something like that. And that's why I've included those. Chemistry, and honestly, I like to use a capital K for kilo. Some books haven't kind of jumped on that bandwagon yet, um, but I think it's uh, more appropriate that the bigger units, you're going to use a capital, and the smaller units, uh, you know, a centimeter is very tiny, um, compared to a meter, we use a lower case. So I, you need to, if you're one of my students, you need to know all of these. So um, a pico, a pico of anything, it could be a picosecond, a picometer, a pico of anything is 1 times 10 to the minus 2 of that base unit. A nano as a prefix is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 of that base unit. So if you'll notice on all of my conversions here, the one always goes by the prefix. If you memorize my way, it can help you remember where the one goes. I always put the one by the prefix. And then I put the scientific notation by my base unit the one where there won't be a prefix, okay? Um, I, I noticed a mistake here, so cross that, that deci off. I saw a prefix, and I noticed the scientific notation doesn't go by the prefix. So that's a good way to help you memorize. So I'm kind of glad we have that mistake there, all right? So it doesn't matter. We're, we're, you're going to come across a bunch of base units, bytes, um, pixels, meters, joules, grams, pascals. It doesn't matter. The prefix means the same thing in terms of a conversion factor. All right? And um, so uh, sometimes I, I try to find ways to help you memorize. And if you still watch Saturday Night Live, very funny, funny show, I like to say, the scientific notation goes by the lonely base unit. The base is lonely because you notice there's no other letter with it. There's no prefix with it. It's lonely or all by itself. Okay, that, that's a stretch, but if that helps you remember, I'm, I'm down with that. If you can come up with something better, you go for it. Okay, so let's try this in this video segment on some one-step metric conversions. Um, if your teacher has you shift decimal places a lot, you may have learned that in middle school. 
Some of them learned some phrase about King Henry. I don't know the rest of the phrase. All right. Um, I don't like decimal shifting. I will get tired in a calculation or I'm going fast and I will shift the, video, the, the decimal the wrong way. I would say nine times out of 10, I've seen brilliant students shift the decimal the wrong way. And in my class, again, you have to do what your teacher does, but in my class, do math, show math, and that includes all metric conversions. I don't do any decimal shifting, right? Sometimes in an AP or IB class, you don't have to worry about it. You, you wouldn't have to show that work, but sometimes you would. You don't know how the points are going to be distributed. So don't be a decimal shifter, right? Set up your math, be careful, do math, show math, all right? So one step metric conversion is going to be between prefix and a base unit, okay? So I have 32 nanometers. I want to get rid of nanometers. They're in a numerator, so to eliminate them, I'm going to put them in the denominator. Now notice I'm putting my units in before I worry about a conversion factor. Okay, then I'm gonna put my meter on top. Now look, nanometers cancel nanometers, I'll be left with meters. Now here's what I want you to do, find the prefix. Nano is a prefix. Find the prefix, put the one. Now put your scientific notation by that lonely base unit, okay? Do your math, round to the correct number of sig figs. You should be able to do this one without a calculator. 3.2 times 10 to the minus eight meters, right? Because this is 3.2 times 10 to the first. When you multiply, you subtract, or you add, so one plus a minus nine is minus eight. So when you multiply, you add the coefficients, okay? So you might do that in your head or plug it into your calculator. It's up to you. Okay, my next one. I've got 58.97 kilograms. I want to go to grams. Kilograms to grams is one step. If it helps you to write, one kilograms are equal to one times 10 to the third grams. I suggest listing those conversion factors, okay? I want to eliminate kilograms. They're in the numerator, so I put them in the denominator. Grams would go in the numerator. Find your prefix. That's where the one goes. Writing your conversion factor like that can help you with that so you don't put the scientific notation in the incorrect location. Scientific notation by the base unit that's lonely because there's no prefix. So I have 5.897 times 10 to the fourth grams. Units, sig, figs. Watch those conversion factors. Okay, I'm going to do one more in this video. Stop, rewind, put me on time and a half if you get it, whatever you need. So I have 5.36 times 10 to the 23rd grams. I want to go from grams to milligrams. So I'm going to do this railroad approach. I want to eliminate grams. So I want grams in the numerator, so they cancel grams in the denominator. I'm going to milligrams. If you memorize the way I've got my chart, Find your prefix, there's your one. And now you have to have memorized that milli is one times 10 to the third, okay? And you would get for your final answer, 5.36 times 10 to the minus 20 milligrams. Sig figs, units, always check at the end. You don't wanna lose points over something that you understand. All right, good luck with these one step. I hope after two or three of them, you're gonna say, man, easy peasy math, I can handle this. 
Thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time.